Hello guys, how you guys doing? My name is BJ Min from HowExpert.com where we publish short how-to guides on unique topics by everyday experts. And today we have a very special guest. Her name is Maggie Mayfield, who is the author of How to Become a Voiceover Talent. And I want to do a quick bio about her. Very impressive um, bio. One second, guys. I just want to show you uh, the screen. One second, guys. Okay, as you can see, probably right here. I'm going to show it. She has her own website, Maggie Mayfield, and I'm going to read a quick bio about her here. Uh, <laughs> Maggie Mayfield is a Los Angeles based personality and comedian who runs a successful weekly open mic and has traveled all over the country performing for clubs and festivals. Maggie is an established on air radio personality currently with Coast 103.5 and on air weekends on Star 102.1 uh, based in Dallas. She has also spent time running a country FM station near Chicago and as an air, on-air talent in Champaign, Illinois, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Seattle, Washington, and Arizona. Her podcast, Why Tune Shuffle, is getting national press, most recently on Sam Cedar's show, The Majority Report. She had just published her first book, How to Become a Voiceover Talent, and lectures frequently at the Academy of Radio Broadcasting in Huntington Beach, helping young students make their way in the world of broadcasting. And this is our book, uh, How to Become a Voiceover Talent. And uh, basically, it's going to teach you how, if you have a voice, if you have a talent, if you have a great voice. Everyone says you have a fantastic voice, and you want to learn how to uh, make an income from your talent that you have been given. You have an amazing voice. She's going to teach you through this book called How to Become a Voiceover Talent. It's on Amazon.com as a Kindle, ebook, paperback book, and audio book. And for those of you who don't know, may not be in Southern California, Coast Run of 3.5 is a huge radio station in Los Angeles. It has 81,000 followers on Facebook. Uh, this is Maggie Mayfield, Mayfield doing her work. Radio <laughs> job is right there. She, she knows what she's doing. I just want to let you guys know she's the real deal. Okay, she's doing her work. Radio hippie right here. Okay, and she's a stand-up comedian. Uh, it's Coach 103.5. They also have a Wikipedia page for those of you who may not know. Uh, just wanted to uh, just say that about Maggie May Mayfield. She is the real deal. So, Maggie, thank you for coming to the show. How are you doing? I'm awesome. What an intro. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So, <laughs> let's get right to it. Like, you wrote How to Become a Voiceover Talent. And uh, this is especially for newbies and beginners out there um, who have a talent. There's so many people with talent right, all over the world, with an amazing voice. Um, let's just get started. How did you first tell us your story? How did you um, get from no, knowing you had a voice, talent, or what voice, talented voice, to actually making an income through it? And what other options to do it? We'll talk about that more in detail. Yeah, I actually started, um, it was my very first full-time job working in radio, and there was a client in Las Vegas that was like, hey, uh, we need someone to voice this commercial. It was like 60 seconds, and they paid me $100. And I was like, this is the easiest money ever. Um, and that was like before the internet. So finding that kind of work was difficult. It was sending out demos and just knowing people that knew people that um, wanted to pay you to read things. And... Over time, it turns out I'm a great reader, which really is all it takes. I mean, having a pleasant to listen to voice is one thing, but to be able to read something and not make it sound robotic, like you just picked it up and aren't short, you know, like there's there's a skill to that. So if you're a great reader, then I think anyone can do it. And so um, you don't get into radio because you want to make a lot of money. And so to kind of fill in the gaps, as time went on, I discovered that there's such a market for reading every, like everything you hear, everything on television you hear, everything you hear on the radio, all of the audio books that you hear online, like through Amazon. Um, anytime you get onto a bus or in an airplane, like that's all voiceover stuff. You call someone, you call customer service, someone had to read that. And so our lives are so saturated with voices and, you know, outside of Pixar films, it's not the same 15 voices so wow. there's room for everyone and there's kind of just a trick into getting it out there and starting to read and how to work and make money reading right. 
So like for the very new, like let's talk about your story a little bit. Like how did you even get that radio job in the first place? Was it internship? Like before you got your first hundred dollars, like how did you even get that first door? Like what did you do there? Yeah, I actually went to broadcasting school and it, it was such a networking tool. The first job that I got, that first full-time gig I got, I, <laughs> I, I have a philosophy where you can't get what you want unless you ask for it. And so I would call up all of my favorite radio stations and be like, hey, do you have a job? Like, I want to work there. I'll do anything. I'll take out the trash, I'll, whatever. And I called up one of my favorite radio stations and they said, we don't have anything, but uh, our sister station might. And so they took down my information. Their front desk lady called me and I wound up sending in my demo package to the program director at my first job. And as my tape went across her desk, someone that I had gone to school with already had a job there that I had no idea. And he said, I know Maggie Mayfield, that's amazing. Like, she's so great, she's so great to work with. And so that's how I got my foot in the door, so. So you took one step at a time, just willing to, to do it, right? So yeah. um, uh, I'm curious, like, um, there's probably, people who will watch this video for the future and you'll be an inspiration to them. I'm sure they're just getting started. Like for you, like when did you have this desire to use your voice uh, to, to create an income? When did you first know that? When did you know that? So, because there's people out there, maybe they might doubt themselves or whatnot. When did you start to desire to do uh, work in the radio field or use your voice? Well, that's an interesting story. I actually thought I was going to be an actor and I was going to be on Broadway and I went to New York City like right out of high school and uh, and I, I was going to be a, a big actor, a big star, a musical theater star and because I've, I've always been able to sing and and dance and turns out when I got there I just I couldn't compete. I couldn't keep up with everyone. I didn't have the self-confidence to do it but when I came back home I found an ad in the paper for radio broadcasting. And to me, that was like, oh, that's like acting, but no one sees you. Right. And I can I can do that. And I just figured it out really quick. I figured out what the, the game was. And I liked being able to say what I thought rather than reading other people's words. So that's how I got into radio. And when you continue to hear people say like, wow, your voice is so pleasing. You have one of the best laughs on the radio. It's so like, I like your voice, the things that you say. Um, it becomes so addictive. And then when you figure out that there isn't a lot of cash to be made, but you still, you know, need to eat and fill up the gas tank. I just got creative and that's how I discovered voiceover. And now it's so, I can't tell you how easy it is. And I lecture on this all the time. If you're just willing to get in the way and right. continue to update your demo and just send it out, you'd be surprised how many people are like, wow, it's amazing that you, read that for, and people are so grateful for the fact that you put yourself out there. I would say voiceovers is like 80% marketing yourself and actually 20% work. You spend so much time sending your work out, trying to get in the way and trying to get noticed by people. And you do hear a lot of no's because you're not the right fit for the job that they're looking for. And that's okay. You know, if they need a man's voice, like I can't obviously <laughs> do that. But if they need like a kid's voice, I really can't do that either. So right. What are some examples? What are some examples of voiceover jobs now and for the future that you foresee? Yeah, well, radio and television commercials will never die. Like we'll see that forever. Um, and there is such a huge market now for online audiobooks. And so if you're a fantastic reader, like you'll like it is so hard to find someone that can take a story and make it come to life with the sound of their voice. So if you're really good at changing your voice and making up different characters, and I don't mean like extreme, but like throwing an accent or slowing down your voice, you know, those are all character choices that you make. So audiobooks will never disappear. And right now, a lot of my clients happen to be in the South Pacific and in India, and they're teaching a lot of English classes. So, to be able to really slow down and enjoy the words that come out of your mouth. That's really what they're looking for. So I do a lot of online classes. I did a, a big, like a, like a leapfrog. Do you know what those are? Like kids I use? It. What, isn't that like a toy, educational toy? Yeah. They're like yeah. a, yeah, it's an educational toy. And so 
I probably was three months of work helping one company in South Korea put together these English learning speaking leapfrog things, but their version of it. And so that's all that's all my voice that they're learning. Wow. <laughs> right. That's so, it's amazing. It's so cool. How did and, you get that job? I'm curious, like how people want to know, like, how do you get that type of job, like working for leapfrog? Oh yeah. Well, it wasn't for Leapfrog specifically, but there was a client that um, was working for their version of Leapfrog. And when you put together these programs, they're just searching for voices. And there are so many resources on the internet that you can use. Um, Upwork.com is a resource that I use. I probably make more money going through that freelance website than anything else, which is free to use. Um, Voicebunny.com is also a really good one. They focus specifically on commercials. Okay. Um, there's a website called allaccess.com and that's right. mostly for radio professionals. But if you go in there, there's a bunch of stuff about, um, like what's happening in radio. It's becoming very, what's called McDonaldized in the sense that it's being, it's very similar. And so in the middle of the country, these radio station clusters are run by very few people. And when you have four voices that are to represent four stations, your commercial loads sound so weird when your favorite radio personality in the afternoon is also reading the, the car commercial down the street. So they hire these production companies and I think I'm on the roster for like four of them. And anytime they need a, a spot read, they just send it to me. And then at the end of the month, I get billed per spot or I get um, paid per spot. Um, there are also websites that you can use, which are called pay to play sites. Okay. So sites like voice, voice one, two, three voices.com, which are amazing. Um, but you do pay like a, a yearly annual fee to have access to all these auditions that you can do. Right. Um, I'm not a fan of using those. I don't like the idea of having to pay to have access to information. Um, but I know many colleagues that use them and have been very successful using them and then make their money back multiple times over. So, Wow, wow. Uh, now, out yeah. of all those sites, those are awesome uh, resources. Now, yes. some people may want to know, what's the best one out of all those for a voiceover talent who's just getting started, just wants that foot in the door? Out of all those, what would you say is the best one? I would say Upwork. It's Upwork. been the easiest and the most lucrative for me. And uh, ideally, what type of jobs uh, is a simple one for beginners out there just getting started on Upwork. What are you searching for? Um, I just do voiceover talent. The thing okay. is, is, whatever your demo, your demo is the representation of your work, which is so okay. easy to put together. You can use a program called Audacity, which is free to download online. And there okay. are so many YouTube videos that'll help you navigate your way through editing, which sounds like it might be difficult, but it, it really is, it is really, really simple uh, if you follow the YouTube videos to edit. But I would just say start reading everything. If you hear a commercial that you like on the radio, try and memorize a couple lines of that because that's all you really need in your demo is, right. you know, three different examples of commercials that you have read. And as you get more work, you can update that. And so right. it's more and more professional. So for the beginner getting started, Ha have a demo is is really important. Yeah. Have a good demo. So yes. use Audacity. Do you recommend any good microphones or equipment for for the beginners to get started, or what kind, what kind of equipment to use? To end yeah, how to, yeah, yeah. So the equipment part is so interesting. I literally, when I first started doing this out of my home, I used a USB mic that I got off of Amazon for like seventy dollars. It wasn't anything big and then I literally just put two socks over top of it just clean socks so that it does so when you record into it you don't get this weird pop, 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 popping sound okay. um, which sounds terrible when you're listening back it, it like disrupts the reading and the meaning of what you're reading and then I literally just plugged it right into my computer and you can just start recording um, I use a program called Adobe Audition okay. but that is a program that you pay for it's like three hundred dollars every year to to use it, but I use it for more than just voiceovers and that's for radio and my podcast and all sorts of editing. So, okay. um, but yeah, but audacity is a super, it's a free, um, program to use that you can literally just download and plug in your USB mic and start recording. I also would recommend because sound engineering is so difficult. If you're really serious about it, what I also did was 
the plastic bins that you can get at like Walmart or Target that you just fill with Christmas decorations or whatever. I bought one of those for like five bucks. And then on the inside, I double lined it with mattress topper. So right. I just glued it onto the inside. I would stick the microphone in there and then have the computer right on top. So I'm literally just reading into this big box. And it, the, I mean, you couldn't even tell. The sound quality is better. The better to do that. So good. Yeah. So you don't have this like echo that happens in most rooms. A lot of my colleagues will record in their closet, which I've done. <laughs> um, but yeah, anywhere that that has a small, intimate space, like you're not going to record in the bathroom because the sound is going to bounce all over the place. But you just want the most crisp sound of your voice when okay. you're recording. Okay. One chapter, chapter that you talked about, about one of the public chapters you said vocabulary, vocabulary. importance of mm -hmm. vocabulary. Can you uh, elaborate a little bit on that, the importance of vocabulary? What do you mean by that in that chapter? Um, I think that chapter was talking about the things that you'll hear people say, um, like your clients will ask you for. So the difference between like a script and a copy is very slight. Like a piece of copy is generally for a commercial or for some sort of advertising, and it won't be longer than 60 seconds maybe two minutes max. I mean, that's a piece of copy. A script is going to be something that is either more story based or something longer, like those um, learning, those leapfrog learning pads that I was doing, that's considered a script. So they can be used interchangeably, but just know that if someone is going to, if a client is like, hey, I have a script for you, know that that's going to be a little bit longer of a project than a, a piece of copy. And then you can charge accordingly. Um, other things that I, it's been so long since I've even read that. Some of the vocabulary. Yes. There was a union versus non-union. Can you? Oh, yeah. OK. Yeah, a little bit about that. What's, what's, why is that important for other people getting started? Yeah. So you'll hear a lot of talk about being a union member. People get so excited about getting a voiceover agent right off the bat, which I've been doing this for years, and I still don't have an agent. They are so hard to find and come by. But it shouldn't stop you from wanting to try. Um, there's just not a lot of money in it for agents just to pick someone up based on voiceovers alone. So they're really looking for actors, uh, comedians that can also do voice work. And that's, that's how an agent will make money. So, um, but a lot of times agents want to work with someone who is in the union called SAG-AFTRA. That's the Screen Actors Guild, Actors, Fine Arts, Theater, I can't remember the rest of it. But uh, that means that you pay dues and that the union protects you. If a client isn't going to pay you, it means that they're going to back you and that there's a certain standard, like a certain rate that you have to charge to mm. be in the union, um, which is cool. It's very cool to have that kind of backing. However, as a non-union worker, you can charge whatever you like. You can work with whomever you like. Um, even, even someone that it, uh, has a union job, they can hire you as a non-union actor and pay you the union rates, um, which can totally get you a union right. card if, if that's what you want. But yeah. um, when you're working non-union, you're your own boss. You can set your own rate. You can charge whatever it is that you want to charge. And so I've been non-union for, I mean, forever. I mean, for the last three years doing it and, um, and, and paying the rent. So with the age of the internet, now you don't have to depend on agents as much. That's the point too, right? Absolutely. And that's what I was saying before, like 80% of what you're doing is marketing. You're gonna be spending so much time on the right. internet. And I don't want to discredit social media either. I can't tell you how many jobs I've gotten because I keep posting online like, hey, I'm a voiceover actor. If you know anyone, here's my updated demo. And the return on that alone, just being put in touch with other people in the industry that need something like what I offer, it's been pretty great. So use your front, tell people, you know, you're uh, your own people. advocate. Yeah. Put, your, put yourself out there for sure. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm curious too, for, for beginners getting started also, what is the ultimate dream voiceover talent job that like most voiceover talents want to get? Like if they, they are, they're gonna get started with small jobs, but what's the ultimate example of like a big job? What do they want at the end of the day? Yeah, I think most people want to do cartoons. I would love to do a cartoon. I would love to be hired to do a long-term cartoon series like The Simpsons. Can you imagine having that kind of thing? Oh, I see. It's like, so your long-term job and it's oh, yeah. established? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, and then you have work regularly, and you don't have to go out and continue to search for work. Most yeah. of the time, people will come to you and be like, hey, do you mind? Can you do this thing? And then you're like, mm, it's not 
you know, I'm good. Like either yes, yeah. you pay, you're gonna pay me extra and enough to do it because now you're yeah. established, or B, um, you can say no because you have long-term established work. So absolutely, that's a good vision to have in 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 in, in beginners' hearts in the beginning. You know, you know, you mm -hmm. take one step at a time, you get better and better over time. So. Uh, how can people get to hire you, work with you? Where do they go and find you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think you showed everyone on my website at maggiemayfield.com, yeah. uh, but it's spelled M-A-G-G-I. There's no E on the end of Maggie, but M-A-G-G-I mayfield.com. Maggiemayfield.com, and also she, you have an Upwork profile. So I do. Yeah, yeah, I'll put those links below, below the description to make sure you guys can get in contact with Maggie Mayfield if you want any voiceover talent. Also, don't you, aren't you a stand-up comedian in Los Angeles or anybody? Yeah. 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 So like, go check out our website. I, I just noticed there's some shows out there if you guys live in the Southern California area. That's pretty cool. So yeah. Maggie, thanks for being on this interview. I appreciate you. Yeah, Again, thank you. Yeah, click on the link below the video. Check out our resources and also check out our book. I appreciate you. Take care, guys.